welcome back to the my workbook right now we're going to work on the sales worksheet and the directions are down here most of the font things i've done for you already so we don't have to worry about these directions all done i'm going to hit delete okay we need a percent of total so we have to get the total easiest way click where you want the total to go and click auto sum check that it's selecting the right numbers the right values and hit enter um, percent of total we did before in basketball can you do it for yourself I hope you can I'm gonna come back to it so I'm gonna let you try that you can stop and see if you can get it right so go ahead and do that I'm gonna go over here and do commission next it says right here commission is sales times rate well here's my sales here's my rate so commission equals, all formulas begin with an equal sign. And so, um, sales is in B5. I can just type it in. It uses the asterisk for multiply. And the rate is in D5. It would be wrong if I wrote 10% here. And the reason that would be wrong is I'm hard coding in the data. You want to use the cell name, the cell address so that if the rate goes up it'll be correct this way if the rate goes up my commission won't respond accordingly and now i'm cheating my employee which would be very bad so again you want to work smart not hard and so i need to use d5 and these are relative references so i can autofill down so these cell addresses that refer to the cells have no dollar signs the relative references if i hit the f4 function key the dollar signs show up. That means it's an absolute. It'll always use this one. That would be problematic. A single dollar sign means in this case, row five is stuck. So if I pulled across or pulled down, it always used the value in row five, though the columns would change. Hit F4 again. The F4 function key toggles through the reference types. Dollar sign in front of the D means the, the column would be stuck, but the row would be allowed to change. I want them both to be relative references, so I don't use that. And I autofill down. I spot check to make sure it makes sense. 20% of 22,000 would be twice as much and move a decimal point over. Yep, that looks good. Here's the bonus. So it says the bonus equals if the sales. So I'm going to just go to that cell. Now, if I click here, the data is not in cell F23. Here's the name box. You can see which cell I'm in. This data is actually in cell A23. When there's nothing blocking the information or the text from um, in another cell, it will just overflow. So this just overflowed through all the empty cells next to it. But if I had put something in cell B23, it would have just stopped there. But here's the data. Now I can go into the formula bar and select it, which is nice. I don't have to do all that typing. Copy it. Control V, paste it, and it says name. Hmm. That's because it doesn't know what sales means. So I can click here for sales, and I really mean the sales for my um, salesman, 21,000, B5. So it says if it's greater than or equal to 20,000, We'll give him $500. If not, he gets $0. And that's great. His gross pay equals his commission plus his bonus. And that's all good. And now I can autofill both of these down. Perfect. I would like my bonuses to have dollar signs. I think it would look nicer. So I'm going to take these numbers here and I'm going to autofill across, but I'm going to use the autofill options to fill formatting only. Cool. Okay, I need totals. And so I'm going to make this bold because I like it to stand out. And to get the solid line, I highlight the line above and I go to my borders and shading and I choose a thick bottom border. I always have a hard time finding it. Ah, there it is. Mr. 
Roush is the local 2000. Mr. Roush is the local 2000. Well, I'm doing this after school and sometimes that happens. Since I used my auto sum icon here, I could autofill, but it wouldn't make sense to have the rates summed. But it would make sense to me to have the commissions and the bonus sum to make sure that matched the gross pay sum. So what I can do is just click here, and I'm hoping, click on auto sum. Aha. And I check. Perfect. Escape. Okay, did you figure out the percent of total? Remember, always an equal to begin a formula. It's this person's sales divided by the total. And if I autofill, I get divided by zero because it's trying to pull. It's trying to pull by using relative reference the next cells down, which is not what we want. So I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to do control Z. What I want in my reference here is the double dollar signs. So that's an absolute reference, F4. Now it always will use this cell, which is what we want for percent of total. I hit enter. I formatted it as percents for you already. And you can go down. Now, if I click here, oh, did I lose it? Oh, see, look, ah, I, I might as well have just have gone all the way down. I lost the underline. Drives me crazy. But I'm learning the new trick. Autofill across, but only the formatting. Only the formatting. And now it's center aligned, and I want it left aligned. Excuse me, right aligned. There we go. Oh, and I lost my bold. So control B will do that. And we're back in business. And then we were supposed to create a pie graph showing percent of sales. I did all of this for us. Grid lines we don't have to worry about. I'm going to clear that all out using the clear command way over here. Clear all. And a pie chart percent of sales. Piece of cake. Oh, that would be funny because it's a pie chart. Piece of pie. So highlight. The title, the column title, and all the data members, but do not get the totals. Remember where to go for charts? You insert a pie chart. So there's recommended charts here. I'm going to go to pie chart. And there it is. Perfect. I want it under the data so it'll print a look, um, it'll look centered. And this was percent of sales. And if this prints in black and white, I can't tell whose is whose. So it's not a good format to use. So I'm going to go over here to quick layouts. And I like the top one. I've tried this before. And that's good. Now I have the line showing up. And I can see who gets which piece of the pie. And I can pull one out if I need to. And it puts leader lines in. But this Larry Bird fellow over here, I can't see his, it won't be able to see the text. And it prints. So I'm going to double click on one of the other data labels and it opens up the format data label pane or panel. And I don't want best fit, fit. I want outside end. And there's no okay. So I'm just going to click. Try again. I want, I want the data labels. Oh, what happened to us? Data labels. And I want outside end. How about inside end? Oh, because I'm only on one, that's why. So I'm going to double. I want them all. Label options. Oh, bother. There we go, label options. And now we want outside end. And there we have it. Make sure you can read everyone's name. If you ever wanted to make the circle bigger, if you click on the circle and pull out, it explodes the pies. So it just pulls out. Oh, it explodes the pies. To make the circle bigger, you have to click on the edge of it, get the square, and then you can resize the pie, the pie chart. 